Protect your home from home. Simple Caravan Insurance, sponsors of the Caravan Channel. We remember the recent budget where the Chancellor of the Exchequer introduced both a pasty tax and a caravan tax on the same day. Blimey, I bet there are some really worried faces at Coachman on that day because, well, a pasty caravan tax, how specific is that? Well, since then, of course, the Chancellor has done a bit of a U-turn on both his plans for pasty and static caravan taxes. Uh, well, sort of, at least. And the Coachman pastiche was never in line for extra taxes anyway. But, well, I don't know about you, but I've always thought that the word pastiche is an odd name for a caravan. I mean, basically, it means imitation. Do you want just an imitation? I'd rather be treated as more of an important person than that. A very important person, in fact. Maybe Coachman could come up with a range of caravans that's called, I don't know, the, the VIP. Blimey, look at that. Yeah, this is indeed the Coachman VIP. And Coachman say it's for people who like the finer things in life. Well, you're watching the Caravan Channel, so that must mean you. Come on, let's take the tour. So this is actually the latest in the VIP range, the 565 stroke four. Wow, some of these caravan names, they really trip off the tongue, don't they? You know, I've no idea what the 565 bit means. It's probably some vital statistic, such as the length of the caravan measured in cubits or something, I don't know. But the stroke four section tells you that it's a four berth and there are actually three four berth vans in the VIP range and each of them divvies out those beds in different ways. One of them has got a couple of bunks in the midships, one of them has got a side permanent bed, and the third one has got an island bed right at the back of the van. But this model has twins! Yeah, these twin beds are really comfortable. This one's six foot long, the other a couple of inches longer still, and they're both two foot four inches wide. And when you're in bed, well, there's a nice reading light and a speaker connected to the remote control CD MP3 player. And when it's time for the lights out, well, there's a handy shelf here for your book, your, your glasses, maybe your nightcap, although I never wear one myself. And then the light switch itself is handily placed, but out of the way, just down here. Head through the door between the two beds and you end up in the end washroom and it's rather nice. There's a, a big shower cubicle on the side, lots of cubbies here and below for towels or whatever and a big Belfast sink, although it is a bit plasticky. There's also this rather, well, fussy Roman blind. You know, I reckon that most people, when they're in the hot seat, will use the other blind, especially if they're in a hurry. So that's the bathroom. Let's have a look at the kitchen now. And here we've got a, well, a reasonable sized fridge with a, a freezer compartment, uh, an oven grill and uh, a dual fuel hob with spark ignition. Uh, there's a microwave in its own little cupboard and an extractor fan in the ceiling. And it's when you're looking up here that you notice the other thing. Or rather, you don't notice it because, well, there's no overhead lights. What Peter Kay would have called the big light because the, uh, the VIP is lit by these LED strips over the tops of all the cabinets. Hmm, rather nice. Even less obvious is what's tucked away under the seat. It's a combi boiler which is exclusive to this range and that provides heating for both the water and for the radiators. And there's an electronic timing system so that you can, uh, well, have the fan cool in the evening, cool overnight and warm when you wake up. And that's nice. Rather less nice is the, well, somewhat untidy arrangement of switch gear and uh, electronic controls that are clustered around the door. And then there's this odd beige panel which, well, it has a, um, a bracket on it for a flat screen TV, but there's no flat screen TV there. And there's a vanity light above it, just where you wouldn't want one above a TV. What's all that about? I think what it could really do with there is a nice big mirror. Now, one of the standout features of the VIP is the high level skyline window, surely one of the caravan design features of the early 20 teens. It looks good. But I reckon there are some pros and cons. On the plus side, well, you get extra light in, of course, and you can see out while other people can't see in. But there is a downside because there's, well, there's no storage lockers up front. But hey, if you want storage, go into the bedroom where there's loads of lockers and storage under the beds. And so you've got storage up high and down low. 
Anyway, I do like a nice simple shelf for on-site storage of well, books and bits and bobs. And these funky little ear lockers are very cute, as are these little mood lighting se sections. But I reckon there should be another light here, under the shelf, over the dining area, so that you can get a good view of your Cornish pastiche and chips. Well, so there you have it. Being a caravanning VIP doesn't come cheap. Expect to pay in excess of £22,000 for this model, but it's a very comfortable package for two, who occasionally have to have some guest accommodation for two more up the front here, and you get some real cutting-edge gadgets into the bargain. So if you like the twin bed idea, packaged together in a single axle caravan that's got great style, check out the Coachman VIP and accept no imitations.